Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by Alan Malventano. Uh, we are here today to discuss uh, the GeForce GTX 970 memory issue, which is an incredibly complex topic. And uh, we're only going to try to limit this to about 10 minutes or something like that for our video. And I will go ahead and say right now that the amount of detail that we'll go into in this video is going to be less than the detail that we will go into at the story at PCPro.com, which will be linked in the uh, notes and description below. That being the case, let's go ahead and get started. So we haven't really talked about it before, but there has, over the last week or two, there have been uh, some concerns and issues uh, from forums and gamers across the internet talking about this idea that, hey, my GTX 970 doesn't seem to be using any memory over 3.5 gigabytes per second. Right. Um, uh, is, it, is it limited in some capacity? There was a benchmark that was written in CUDA that came out that attempted to benchmark segments of the memory. Yep. And people noticed that when the uh, memory was accessed above 3.5 gigabytes, that the performance dropped considerably. That's true. Right, in terms of just gigabytes per second throughput. Mm -hmm. Right, so there are a whole bunch of questions of, was NVIDIA lying to us? Was there not even 4 gigs on there? Was the other 500 megs not even accessible? Yeah. Um, and what was the difference between that and the GTX 980? Uh, on, on Friday, or actually Saturday morning, we got a statement from NVIDIA uh, to the effect that, hey, this is not a bug. This was actually by design. Um, it is something to do with the differences between uh, the GTX and the uh, 980 and the 970 and how the uh, ROP and L2 and memory interface works. They basically decided um, to, or they told us that they had decided to divide up the memory into two separate pools of data, mm -hmm. one of 3.5 gigabytes, in one of 500 megs. Now, at the time, they didn't say exactly why. We do have more information today on exactly why that's the case. Yep. Um, but that kind of explains explains a couple of things. One, why uh, many pieces of software that are monitoring things like memory usage would actually only ever see 3.5 gigs because mm -hmm. they're not tuned to kind of look through the entire pool of data that the Windows memory system has access to. Yeah. Um, but some software like MSI Afterburner actually did. So you, if you were using more than 3.5 gigs on a GTX 970, you would actually see that. And there are some videos on YouTube and lots of forums uh, uh, post kind of talking about that specifically. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, getting into, we're not going to get into like the performance metrics here specifically because I haven't had time to do testing yet. That's something we want to do this week is kind of actually measure this. Um, but even after our explanation on Saturday, there were still a ton of questions uh, pointed at NVIDIA as, okay, well, why is that the case? Why would you do that? What is the actual performance hit, uh, both theoretically or, or in-game? And uh, they kind of, we actually had a, a conference call with them on Sunday night to, to discuss it. Uh, I spoke with uh, Jonah Albin, who is the SVP of GPU Engineering, incredibly smart guy, who kind of um, walked us through some of the specifics. Yeah, it is kind of tricky to get your head around. Yeah. And yeah. so I have this diagram here. We have uh, our Yoga 3 Pro sitting here. And uh, this is a diagram uh, built by Jonah specifically for this discussion of the GTX 970. You are looking at the entirety of that is a GM204 GPU, the same chip that is on GTX 970 and GTX 980. Right. You will notice along the top um, that there are three SMs that are grayed out. Those are uh, the ones that are disabled um, to differentiate a 970 from a 980. Yeah, it's basically binning, though. It's like it know, is it, when you make the chip. Not everything is going to be perfect. They might have to, you know, some of them might right. have defects on them, right? Right. So this represents the 13 of 16 available SMs on the GTX 970, which gets you your 1664 CUDA cores as opposed to your 2048 CUDA cores on a GTX 980. Right. Now the crossbar in the middle is an interesting part of this equation here, right? Each SM has a, a high bandwidth interface to that crossbar, um, and then that crossbar is actually what connects all of the uh, processing cores to the L2 cache, the memory controllers, and then eventually actually out to the DRAM chips themselves. Right. What is new in this diagram uh, that we did not know before is this part here. Notice in the, in the bottom right-hand corner there is an L2 module disabled, and that L2 module represents one-eighth of the available L2 cache on right. the chip, yep. as well as one-eighth of the available ROPs, the raster operators, things that actually do the pixel processing at the end to output through the memory controller. Now, here's what's important. This information, is this is the first time we've known about this information. Uh, when the GTX 980 and 970 were released, NVIDIA did clearly state that the 970 had two megs of L2 cache and 64 ROP 
uh, rasterizing operators, if you will. Yep. Um, that's not the case. The GTX 970 has 1,792K of cache and 52 ROBs. So that was a miscon, I guess. So yes, and the, the claim from NVIDIA that they say happened is that engineering, this is the first time an architecture has been able to do this, disable one portion of an L2 like that. Right. Um, and that engineering and marketing had a miscommunication and that marketing didn't understand that this was occurring. They didn't know that in order to get the uh, uh, configuration that they wanted, they were able to disable one single L2 and that that would result in the changes that we have here. Wouldn't be the first time we witnessed a marketing group not understanding no. very technical things. So. No, but NVIDIA in the past has done a very good job of, of not doing this. True. Right? So that is new information and that's something that you know we'll have to debate as the as the days go on um, but that that is a change the 970 now has officially updated specifications now what happens is that you'll notice that uh, in all the other sections one l2 rop combination uh, attaches to one section of a memory controller one 32-bit section of a memory controller and then goes down into a single DRAM chip right now over on this right hand side you have one disabled L2, but the memory channel, the memory controller portion of that is still enabled. Okay. And that is capable, uh, they're able to do that because they have this, uh, what they call a buddy interface that basically allows the single L2 to the left of the disabled one, right, uh, to handle and control and uh, uh, process information for both memory controllers. Right, so it can just speak with both memory controllers. Right, right. Now, the interesting thing is at the bottom, you'll notice that there is this 3.5 gigabyte section, and then there is a 500 megabyte or 0 0.5 gigabyte section. This is the division that they were talking about. Right. And in order to make um, this GPU the best performing it can be in almost all instances, they decided to divide up into 3.5 and 0.5 gigabyte sections. And the reason they do this is because the 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 that final that eighth memory controller over here is actually running at a lower speed. Right. Well, uh, well, wait, wait. All of the all of the memory controllers run at a specific speed. Yes. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. The the memory access there yeah. will run at a slower so, speed. So in other words, the lower three and a half gig, it, it, you could have all seven of those memory controllers to the left, mm -hmm. all active, all at the same time, all talking to different sections of memory. Right. All within that three and a half uh, gig section. But when it comes to talking to the the higher uh, half a gig, that right. last half a gig there on the right. Uh, all of those transfers would be limited to just that one memory controller and that one DRAM chip attached to it. And that is because of its the way it interfaces with the crossbar and the rest of the GPU differs than every other piece of DRAM or right, memory controller right. on there. If you if you if you just divided it all evenly amongst all of it, mm -hmm. then you would have uh, the the right two memory controllers and DRAM chips would cause the whole thing to go. Slower. slower. Right. right. So we should point out, on a GTX 980, that division doesn't occur. Because all of the L2 is enabled, all of the ROPs are enabled, yep. it basically passes through all the way, you have one 4 gigabyte partition of data. Mm -hmm. Right. So... And it does make sense if you have to disable one of the L2s, which they probably decided they had to for binning... It was all for binning purposes, yeah. Right. Then you get... It will go faster by subdividing it this way on this picture. So it makes sense to why they would do it that way, because there really is no other way to kill one of the right. L2 caches and still get like decent performance from the rest so, of it. Yeah, so the net result, right? So uh, there's a ton more technical detail than what we're going over here in the story. I highly encourage you guys to check that out, or if you have questions, you can leave them here uh, or on the comment section of that story. But the, but the net result is the, the GPU acts as if it has access to only 3.5 gigs of memory until it needs more than 3.5 gigs of memory. Sure. Right, so if you're running a game and and and, and it's using two and a half to three gigs of, of of memory, that's what it's asked for. Then it will use that much. Mm -hmm. As soon as it it hits that three point five gigabyte wall and it says to the operating system, "I need more memory," it's actually technically up to the operating system to divide it up. So the operating system sees this other five hundred megabyte pool of data and it starts to use it. Right. Now it is running slower than the rest of the memory on the GPU. That's true. Right, but what happens based on how uh, game engines work and, and how you know that all kind of gets uh, what was the term we used? Averaged uh, in. Averaged in, right? So even yeah. though it is running significantly slower than the rest of the memory, um, it comes down to the heuristics of is the Microsoft operating system or Linux or whatever smart enough to know that this memory is slower, which it is, and it's trying to put data there that's going to be needed 
less, uh, uh, less frequently or in a less latency dependent method. Yeah, because that memory is still faster than the system memory. It's, yeah, NVIDIA claims that even the slower block of memory, that 500 megs, is four times faster than accessing system memory. Right, uh, and that will obviously vary depending on your system, but yeah. um, that that's still significantly faster. So uh, there, there's a whole lot of political stuff involved in this now. Like people are saying that they Nvidia should have branded this as a 3.5 gigabyte card. Yeah. Uh, there are there are there's there's four gigs on there, and you have access to all four gigs. That last 500 megs happens to be in a different in slower fashion. Yeah, different configuration. I, I think it would have been totally, uh, I think it probably would have been better had they branded this as a 3.5 gigabyte card with 500 megs of, I don't know, some brand that NVIDIA would come up with, like <laughs> Cash Buster 2.0 or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. Level right? 3 cache. Right, yeah, but something. yeah, a level 3 cache would have worked. It's like, well, this prevents you from having to go to system memory for 500 megs, right? And, and, and it could have been branded that way. But, yeah. um, and I think, had the marketing team and the engineering team not had that initial miscommunication with this L2 part, uh, that they probably would have done something to that effect. Now, wasn't there in prior generations of GPUs where they just did that uneven increment memory? GTX 550 right. uh, Ti and 660 Ti yeah. had unbalanced memory controllers where they had three 64-bit blocks, 192-bit mm -hmm. memory controller, and then they had like, um, uh, uh, like one gigabit, one gigabit, and two gigabits worth of actual DRAM kind of applied to it. It would have been more than that, but you know they, yeah, yeah, they had yeah, double yeah. on one of the controllers. But that was more something they could handle internally on the chip, sure. in terms of how the memory got, how the data got distributed. On this, it's different, right? Because that second half, that second pool, that that zero point five gigs really needs to be. It's more handled by the operating system, right? And the operating system knows that it's faster than the system memory, so it's going to use that. It's going to use that first. And, and they did make it a point to explain to us that uh, the communication between the crossbar and the level 2 and the level 2 and the memory controller mm -hmm. is actually much faster yeah. than the memory controller to the DRAM. This, this, right? this bandwidth and this bandwidth is definitely higher than this bandwidth. Right. And so thus, it's not a bottleneck. Uh, yeah, it's not a bottleneck in the case where you have uh, the GPU accessing all four gigs simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? It's just that in that case, the lower 3.5 gig, when it is being accessed, in aggregate will go you know, much faster yeah. right, than that last half of a gig as that's being accessed. Right. But it's not that that last half a gig, just the fact that you're talking to that, that's not going to slow down that, the uh, other. that other memory controller that's right next to sure. it because just you know, it's able to go. You know. The last thing I'll, I'll mention here is that it's interesting that this is only possible in uh, Maxwell, that they were even able to d offer this option. Had this been a Kepler architecture, right. they would have actually had to, if they wanted to disable that L2 for bidding reasons, like they couldn't get all of that to work reliably, yeah. they would have had to have disabled this entire block, and thus you would have had a 192-bit memory controller with three gigs of memory uh, yep. accessing yep. to the to the rest of the SMs. And, th and that's right? why which, they have... Which uh, is exactly the GTX 970M. And that's why fair. they put all those little buddy little Right, things. so the buddy Those, interface... They're in all the blocks, right? right. Because you don't know which, which L2 one? would go away during manufacture. Correct. Right. So uh, that, that appeases my mind in terms of if a 960 Ti did exist, yeah. it would probably look exactly like I drew right now where that blue circle on the right-hand corner is disabled and you've got a 192, you know, you probably disable some more SMs up there. Right. Um, so the, the benefit of Maxwell is that they're able to still keep a wider memory bus, mm -hmm. give you 500 megs of additional memory in that primary pool, give you 500 megs of memory in this kind of additional pool yep. that is <coughs> improving performance but is definitely different than the other 3.5 gigs. I, lots more data in, in the article there, guys. I know it's a very, very complex topic. Um, we'll talk about it more on our podcast this week, I'm sure. Uh, the performance of the GTX 970, though, is what is what it is. Yeah, I mean, right? we've tested it. We've, it didn't. It still performs great. There are yeah. going to be a couple of instances where you are accessing memory in that in that gap, mm -hmm. right? But I, I think um, even if you look on the forum, people are trying to find those instances, and they're harder to find than we maybe uh, would think. And yeah. that and that CUDA benchmark, while interesting and informative, is not really realistic in how games work. Right, no game is going to access only that 500 megs of memory. And and if it did, it would only it would only be touching on it just as it would be touching on the other sections of memory. Yeah. And so it, again, it would average in it and averages I, and, into. Everything. And I believe it would. We haven't done hard testing on this yet, but I believe it would average in to such a low level, like such a finite and very small low level, uh, that it's not going to, you know, cause like a you know a, a three millisecond stutter. 
in a frame. It should not. You know, it shouldn't, yeah. just because it has to touch on this other memory. Like, the memory is not that much slower that it's going to stall the entire thing for most I would hope not. I would hope not. Well, that's something we suspect we will, not, we but we'll, we'll check it out, yeah. If you guys have questions or thoughts, obviously leave them in the comments, either on the YouTube video or at PCPro.com. And like I said, uh, better explanations, more the well thought out and written explanations are available on the story at PCPro.com. And uh, we will continue to follow the story of the GTX 970 memory issue. Thanks, guys. Thanks.